Should gay marriage be legal? So I'm resurfacing this thing that hasn't been talked about in like 10 years, at least not in the mainstream, uh, because of a conversation I was having with someone, and you'll know who you are. Uh, he said he was in, in years past, he was in a debate club. And certain subjects, they were basically allowed to talk about anything, but certain subjects were, were considered too true to be debated. Uh, basically, they were considered beyond the pale. They were things that nobody would ever possibly disagree with. Uh, so we just, there, there's no point in debating them. Uh, and of course, one of these subjects was gay marriage. One of these subjects they weren't really allowed to talk about. Um, first off, it, it struck me as absolutely insane that in a debate club, you wouldn't be allowed specifically to debate, debate the things which are the most, uh, the most controversial. Uh, but second off, it struck me as totally ridiculous, specifically for the gay marriage question, that somebody could conceive of the idea that nobody would be able to make a coherent argument against gay marriage. Uh, when this was the, the norm in society for at least all of recorded history, was marriage between a man and a woman and gay marriage was disallowed. Uh, at least all of recorded history and likely into prehistory before writing was even developed, we have reason to believe that this was the norm in pretty much every culture and these norms developed independently. So, uh, of course, someone's going to be able to make a coherent argument. You don't just get all these thousands of people for thousands of years coming to this conclusion uh, for no reason. So, obviously, there must be some sort of sense to it. Uh, so anyways, with that in mind, um, I'm going to do a quick presentation on why I think uh, we should question the institution of legal gay marriage. And I will say as a quick disclaimer, not that it's going to stop anyone who is going to yell at me from yelling at me, but this is, has nothing to do with the individual, individual gay people, it has nothing to do with you. We're, we're strictly talking about the law. So with that useless disclaimer out of the way... Um, I'm going to begin with asking some questions about the nature of marriage, just as a precursor to the argument. So I'll start with, what is the purpose of marriage, and is it a secular or a religious institution? This is a question that seems to come up often in any debate that I've seen about gay marriage, so I'm just going to address my thoughts on it right now. Um, so is it secular or religious? Uh, in the, I mean, now it's kind of both, but in the beginning... That's a question that wouldn't really have made sense. So the institution of marriage, it goes back, at least as far as recorded history, marriage be as, uh, as we think of it traditionally between a man and a woman, and likely uh, back into prehistory. We have reason to believe that there have been wedding ceremonies be because of archaeological evidence uh, long before we had written recorded history. And it was always of this traditional type between a man and a woman. But the question of is it was it at that time secular or religious is kind of a meaningless question it was kind of both and none uh back in these more ancient traditional cultures they didn't really draw stark distinctions between the religious and secular life or the political life everything was kind of interwoven and everything was everything political was seeped in religious significance and everything religious also had you know a lot of the time uh, a political political aspect to it um, so they were all entangled, and you couldn't really separate the two. And marriage was very much uh, in that same sort of category. Uh, it had very important uh, secular aspects, but it also obviously had very important religious aspects. Like, and we <clears throat> those even survive today with like the ceremonies and stuff. Um, but just to, just to drive the point home is another example. Think of how you would answer the question in ancient cultures, uh, Stone Age, Bronze Age, Bronze Age culture, cultures, even. Were the priests, the shamans, and the druids, and the wise men, would you consider them religious uh, or secular offices? And of course, I think it's much more clear to see in these examples that it's neither. It doesn't really make sense to call them either. A druid would, of course, lead religious ceremonies, but he would also make important decisions for the tribes politically, like who they're going to align with, and you know they would always be consulted on these things. So it's very much political and religious. It doesn't make sense to distinguish them, and marriage is the exact same thing. So it's only in, the rec in recent times, um, you know, in and around the Enlightenment, that we've actually decided to, I think, artificially rend these various uh, facets of marriage apart and split them into a few different buckets, uh, namely the religious 
the secular and I include also the community, although that's not super important for this, this discussion. Uh, it has religious importance, secular importance, and community importance, all of which, when the institution of marriage was, you know, first conceived of, they, they really were inseparable. So anyways, that's the answer to the question. It's neither secular or religious, um, and it's both. And nowadays, it's all of them, right? So anyways, now on to how gay marriage differs. Uh, and I'll go through these three different facets that I've mentioned. The religious, the community, and the secular slash legal aspect. You know, how gay marriage is different. Um, and this is important because I think these things define, these three facets, the religious, the secular, and the community they define what marriage is. And at a certain point, if you, if you don't have enough of the things which make something, you know, which make an X an X, it, it ceases to be that thing. And it has to be, if you're being consistent, if you're being fair, it has to be considered something else. So I'll go, th I'll go through the three of them and talk about how they differ in gay marriage as opposed to heterosexual marriage. Uh, so first off with the religious. Um, this one's kind of the easiest, so I'll begin with it. The definition in pretty much any religion, um, definitely in the Abrahamic ones, if you're a Christian, Muslim, or Jew, is that marriage is between a man and a woman. And essentially the purpose of it is for procreation and then child rearing. Now, I will go on a, on a brief aside. Going back to that point I made about, um, you know, marriage being this, this prehistorical institution um, and wrapped up in religious significance and things like that, I think it makes sense nowadays to assume that this idea of marriage being about procreation and child rearing... Sorry about that, my camera cut off. Uh, so the point I was making was this idea that marriage should be first and foremost about procreation and child rearing. It probably, in the fact that this is a religious idea, it was probably from this same period where the religious and the secular were inseparable and it very well, very well could have been created by a priest or, you know, some sort of religious figure as a means to encourage this kind of behavior, which they, they viewed as good for society, as encouraging the behavior which creates uh, strong family units and children who have both parents in the household. Um, but it made more sense for them to couch it in religious terms and make it a, a divine mandate so as to make it, you know, a much more powerful mandate that people are going to follow. Uh, but I digress from that. The point of bringing up this religious definition that people have is that this is, like it, or, like it or hate it, this is the religious definition. And to them, it is a spiritual, true word of God. And to change this, to change the law surrounding marriage is to necessarily change this religious definition of marriage. And it's necessarily to change uh, what people what people can define, uh, the definition of marriage legally and uh, what people can think basically religiously. It's to remove their religious freedom, to mandate that their religion is wrong, or maybe even change their religion. Um, perhaps you don't like the religious laws in the U.S. and the, the freedom of religion laws, but that's how they exist right now, and I personally think they're not so bad. Um, but if, if, we, if you want to talk about if you don't like them, then that becomes a whole nother, a whole nother other debate. Uh, and I will, I will say that since the, since the beginning of basically the discussions around gay marriage, there have always been proposals which allow for total secular freedom on the gay marriage front, but which do not affect the religious, uh, you know, the religious doctrines of various religions. And these are basically things like, uh, there have been proposals in the U S for domestic partnerships that have all of the, the legal benefits and the tax breaks and things like that, the insurance benefits um, that would be afforded to a heterosexual married couple. But for some reason, these are always denied writ large in the gay community. And now, now that makes me wonder, um, why do they want to have their institution of, of gay marriage, why do they want it ha to have a religious significance? Uh, to me, they're clearly not at least faithful followers of any of these religions if they are gay, seeing how there's not a major religion which uh, condones, you know, gay marriage or be, being gay. So why, it, it seems weird to me that they're so, they've, they were offered an out, they were offered a secular way to have their partnerships be recognized by the state in a secular manner, 
but they still, for some reason, it seems as though they want to affect uh, the religious freedoms and, of, um, and the religious aspects of marriage. So that, se- that to me seems a bit odd. It seems like they were kind of um, maybe revealing their hand a bit, uh, showing what they really wanted. So anyways, um, the, next, the next facet of marriage uh, is the community marriage, uh, the, the community facet of marriage. Um, by this, I mean, you know, the fact that there's a party surrounding marriage uh, and this, this served an important function societally in that like you were declaring your love and declaring your marriage basically to your entire community, your entire town and stuff like this. Um, I'm not going to talk about this one very much because it does apply obviously to, to gay weddings as it does to straight weddings. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, another last, another last point is obviously the secular. In what ways do gay and straight marriages differ in the secular or legal uh, aspects? Uh, so, like I said, um, we have to. Okay, so we have to ask the question: um, What is the secular importance? Is there secular importance to gay marriage? Um, I think clearly there has to be some. Because as I, as I stated before, these these gay people, they are clearly not faithful followers of their religion. They don't follow it to the T because then they would not be gay. So clearly, this has to have some sort of secular significance to them. Um, but what is, what is the secular significance, secular importance to heterosexual married couples? I put forth, and I think this is something that would be pretty much unquestioned in all of history going back, you know, if you go back 50 years and then 10,000 years beyond that, pretty much everyone would have given, would have given this response. Um, the purpose of marriage is to create functioning family units and children who are uh, raised in an appropriate way that makes them functioning members of society. Um, if you go back to even Aristotle, and, and it goes back way beyond him, but he's just a quite old example of someone who very explicitly stated this, that the family is the, the building block of society and very, very important to society's functioning. Um, and of course, the, I bring this up because uh, gays, of course, do not procreate. So they do not fulfill this, uh, this benefit that we get from having marriages in society, having strong family units in society. Um, so they don't fulfill that, uh, that secular role of marriage in a society. So, so should they be allowed to do it? Uh, now I'm going to talk a little bit about the, like the tax breaks and everything. I, I I actually think these are very small, uh, in terms of what they could be. And under certain circumstances, I actually think the tax breaks for marriages and children should be much higher, but I digress. People talk about them a lot. So, um, I'll, I'll talk about them here anyways. Uh, and they're more important again, because they are small. They're more important, um, I guess, like philosophically than an actual practice. But um, let's talk about them anyways. The tax breaks and the insurance benefits and things like that that are afforded to married couples, should they extend to gay couples? Uh, I say they should not simply because they don't, you know, the government gives these, these benefits because they want to encourage certain behavior. And they want to encourage this behavior because it's beneficial for the societies which, you know, they rule over. They want... Uh, strong family units who produce functioning members of society, who produce new children. Um, to provide these same benefits to married couples who, who do not provide this or generally are, can be pretty much assumed to never be, uh, are, can, they can be assumed to, uh, that it could be assumed that they're not going to uh, provide these benefits going forward, obviously, because they can't. Um, to still provide them with these benefits is is counterintuitive and it's ridiculous. It's, Providing a carrot for, for behavior that we should be disincentivizing because it is negative. And yet, and yet we're giving them tax breaks and things like that. So it's, it's totally backwards. We're, per, we're using a carrot to promote degeneracy, and it's, it's insane. Uh, anyways. Um, and th- the last point I want to make on this, so, I, so again, religious, so the religious aspect, they don't, it's not a religious institution at all. It must be purely a secular one. And we know, we know what has always been the secular benefit of marriage, and yet gays do not provide this, but we still provide them, we still want to as a society, today's society, provide them with the benefits, um, the benefits that uh, straight couples get. Um, 
<laughs> but, 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 you know, they can't provide society with the benefits in turn. So it's just, it's just a waste. Um, the, and the last point I want to make is about the, I think the moral danger of having these laws on the books. Um, I think a huge part of the importance of a law passed in a country, especially on the, you know, a national federal level, the importance of them is less so in the actual letter and enforcement of the law and much more so in the moral standard that it sets. I believe that if a country on a national level passes a law, it's implicitly or perhaps rather explicitly uh, setting a moral standard, claiming a moral standard for the entire country. So by, by saying, by the national government saying that we should have gay marriage, they're, they're also saying that we morally as a country, we're setting the standard for our country and saying that we are okay with it. Um, it, it, and that's the largest danger basically provided by, you know, the, 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 the passing of these laws and these various, uh, court rulings is, uh, it's just basically us saying that we are now okay morally. If you agree with the previous arguments that I've given, we are okay morally with promoting, uh, this degeneracy, this thing, these things that are bad for our society. And... You know, that to me is just the largest moral, the largest danger in, the, in this entire thing is the moral danger of actually passing the law. So anyways, that's uh, pretty much all I have to say about this. Um, you know, in, in summation, marriage is both a religious and a secular institution. Um, but gay marriage, uh, it, it doesn't fulfill the purposes of the, uh, the religious purposes or the secular purposes. Therefore, um, it, at the very least, one should be something else entirely. Um, at the very least, do not call it marriage because it is not the historical, uh, societally foundational institution of marriage that we've had for all of history and into prehistory. So, you know, call it domestic partnerships or, or, or whatever, whatever you want. And I wouldn't even necessarily be against providing them with the tax breaks, um, I, I don't think it's good because, again, we're, we're disincentivizing that bad behavior. But at, at the very least, you need to not have gay marriage uh, be legal. We can have gay partnerships, and that would be something of a compromise that I would be more okay with. Um, ideally, we would have neither gay marriages nor gay partnerships. And, and that's not to say... My stance on it is that we shouldn't make it illegal to be gay. Rather, that, rather we should just... Uh, make i don't know if there's uh there's legal terms for this but it shouldn't be illegal to be gay but it should not be legal you know what i'm saying like we should have a neutral stance on it and i think this isn't this is important because again when we pass those laws we're we're taking a moral stance on things as a country and i don't think we should be morally okay with saying that hey this thing which is bad for our society um we're actually going to promote it morally and say that it's good um i also don't think we should go so far as to the other side so as to say we should have the cops busting down the doors of every gay couple um, just because they are gay. I think we just simply need to uh, honestly take a more moderate stance on it and just be like, this is something we shouldn't promote, but we won't actively, we won't actively persecute. Um, and in order to do that, we need to make the institution of gay marriage, uh, we need to revoke the legal status of that institution, basically. Now, I don't know, that's basically all I have to say. You know, be kind, try and have a uh, constructive, constructive discussion about this. You know, I'm not coming at this from a place of hate. So uh, have a good one.